Good morning all. In today's session of operating system, we will be dealing with process synchronization. So, before going on to see what is a process synchronization, let us first deal with why is the need for a synchronization of a process. Now, first in process synchronization, we will identify what is a problem. So, here we will deal with a race condition. So, race condition here is nothing but assume I have two rotans here, one is your producer, other is your consumer. These are just the instructions. Producer will just increment a counter value whereas the consumer will decrement the counter value and here the initial value of the counter whichever we are using it is a shared variable which is to be used by both the producer and the consumer. So, initial counter value is equal to 5. We normally go for sequential execution assume we will go for producer execution followed by consumer. So, in that case 5 will be incremented so it will become 6 and then it goes to your consumer where it will be decremented again. So, the value of it will be 5. Now, we go for a case where we go for consumer followed by the producer where the consumer value will become 4 and automatically after incrementing it becomes 5. But when you go for concurrent execution, so when I say concurrent execution it does not mean that all the instructions are executed simultaneously because we have only one CPU. So, there should be an interleaving of the instructions. So, some instructions of producer will be executed followed by some instructions of consumer and some instructions of producer. So, when you take this particular scenario where the counter value is phi initially at last if you just concentrate on these two statements S phi and S 6 the counter value will be either 6 or the counter value will be either 4. So, when the counter value will be 6 if the last updated is of your producer, if the producer updates its la last, the counter value will be 6. If the consumer updates the register at last, the counter value will be 4. But if you take the final result, the final result of your counter should be 5. So, in no case, this output is matching with our 5, which is the original value. So, this we call it as a race condition because whichever process is giving the output at last, whichever is coming first, that output is being reflected here. So, this is we call it as a race condition. Now, why is that we are getting a race condition here? Because I am making use of the counter value. So, counter is a variable which is shared. So, on this counter variable I am asking the producer to make the changes as well as the consumer to make the changes. But shared variable cannot be made changes at the same time by two different process. So, what we have to do? What is the solution to overcome this race condition? So, the first point we need to deal here is nothing but your critical section. So, critical section is nothing but when you write a program. So, the part of the program or the variables which you want it to be shared meaning that it are to be used by more than one process simultaneously. So, in that case that particular part of a program where it should be shared by multiple process we call that as a critical section and because of this critical section where we are allowing multiple process we are getting a problem of race condition. To overcome that what we need to do if I have P1 and P2 both of them want to use a shared variable some type of synchronization is to be achieved. So, you have to provide some synchronization based on which you will not get the problem of race condition. So, for that we have a critical section problem where it will be involved in designing some protocols. So, critical section problem will deal with designing the protocols which will help the process to be synchronized. So, synchronization will help us to overcome the race condition which we have occurred in the previous example. So, for that what we do is we have n number of methods, but here as of now you just concentrate on this. So, this is a part where my data is to be shared. So, I will employ an entry section. So, before entering into the critical section we will make a test will enter into the critical section and again we come out of the critical section which is nothing but your exit section and this is your reminder section and we make sure that only one process is present in the critical section at a particular time. Meaning that if I have P1 and P2 only one process will be using the shared variable at a time and if only one process is using the shared variable at a single time you will not get the race condition. If I want to design the protocols for this critical section problem, the basic three requirements are your mutual exclusion, progress and bounded weighting. As it implies mutual exclusion means that if P1 is in the critical section, this P1 
will not allow any other process to enter into the critical section. So, only one process will be present in the critical section. So, one process will exclude the other process from entering into the critical section. Now, coming to the progress. So, P1 has entered into the critical section and it has done its work and it has come out of the critical section. Now, when the critical section is empty, there is no process present in the critical section, the chance will be given to some other process to enter into the critical section. So, you know, you should not make some other process to wait for indefinite amount of time to enter into critical section. Coming to bounded waiting, now when you have a critical section here and assume you have two process P1 and P2. So, each time the CPU should not give only the chance to P1 to enter into critical section. So, there should be a limit on the number of times a particular process needs to enter into critical section when the request is made by some other process. So, since P2 has made a request, there should be a limit on P1 how many times it can enter into the critical section that is your bounded weight. So, these are the three requirements for designing an algorithm to overcome race condition. Now, as we have seen in process synchronization, we need to make use of these locks, enter into critical section and go for it. Now, we basically go for employing some hardware for synchronization methods. The first method here we go for using is disabling interrupts. So, when P1 is performing an option in the critical section, you see that no particular interrupt will be uh, enabled. So, you go for disabling the interrupts, but this disabling of interrupts can be possible when you go for uni processor because you have only one processor and no doubt you will get a race condition uni processor. But when I go for multi processor, when you are disabling the interrupt, so that information should be given to the CPU. So, every time for disabling an interrupt, you have to go for sharing the message. So, you need to go for using a message passing approach which is very tedious when you go for uh, multi processors. Now, coming to the next method, we have test and set, swap and unlock. We will see each one of them in detail. Now, coming to the first one, test and set. So, here these are the instructions which are present here. Now, you have a shared variable here which is nothing but lock. The shared variable here is a lock. So, this is your lock variable and the initial value of it is false. Now, assume I have two process P0 and P1. Now, P1 wants to enter into critical section. So, before entering into critical section, it has to execute this test and set. So, we will start executing from here while of 1 and here when you go for you are calling a function test and set and you are passing the address of this lock variable. So, lock false is your value and the address of this is 1000. So, when I go for test and set of ampersand log, what is the value I am passing here 1000 and this is a call to your test and set function. So, that 1000 value will be stored in your target. So, I have another variable here which is nothing but target which is containing the address of your log which is nothing but 1000. Now, coming to here your return value is equal to star of target as you all know star will give you the value present at that address and what is the address of your target 1000. What is the value present at 1000 false? So, your return value here I am just going for return, return value will be false. Coming to the next instruction, I am directly changing the value of 1000. So, now after you are returning this value, this lock value is becoming true, meaning that this is it has now been locked, no other person can enter into that particular thing. And return RV, what is present in RV false? So, that particular value will be coming here while test and set value what is that it has written false. So, this total condition will become false and since it is false you will not go for spending any time here you move on to your next one where it enters into your critical section code. Now, P0 will be in your critical section and once it has executed your critical section you will make this lock value to become false again and you come out of your critical section and this is a part where you can perform your operation. So, in reminder section there can be multiple process, but in critical section you should have only one process. So, here we need to check how the mutual exclusion is being arrived. Now, assume P0 is in critical section and this is the case. Now, P1 wants to enter into critical section. So, from where we start again while of 1. So, here test and set of ampersand lock. So, here I will just pass the value as 1000 
and this 1000 will go into my target. This is your target value and again you are going return value is equal to star target. Star target is nothing but what is the value present here true. So, your return value will be true. So, RV is equal to or return value is equal to true. So, when you go for this particular true value, you come here while test and set of lock. So, what is the value it is returning true meaning that you are not allowed into the critical section. So, here we are achieving mutual exclusion. Now, we go for the next one here swap. When you go for this particular thing swap same as your test and set, see here instead of key here we go for using another variable one is your lock, the other is your key and these are your values. So, in initial value of your lock will be always false and the initial value of key here I am taking it as true. Swap of ampersand of lock and key. So, you are just passing the address of it assume this is 1000, this is 2000. So, when you go for 1000 and 2000 you are passing the address. So, that address will come here. So, this is 1000, A value is 1000, B value is 2000. So, Boolean time. So, what is that you are doing here? This is just a swap method where the values of A and B are passed, but you are not direct, you are directly working on the addresses. So, what will happen? These two values will be swapped. So, here I get a value true and here I get a value false. Now, come back to this particular condition. After you go for this swap, while of key is equal to true, initially it was true. So, you are going for swap. When you are going for swap, it, the values of this key and lock are being changed. So, again you enter into the loop, what is my key value here? Key value here is false. So, when it is false, it comes out of your while loop and you enter into the critical section. Once you are done with your critical section, you make your lock is equal to false indicating that other process can enter into critical section and this is your reminder part. So, when you go for this swap also, you are making a check that only one process is present in the critical section at a time. So, out of two requirements, your mutual exclusion is achieved and you, your progress is achieved. But when you go for the last requirement bounded weighting that is be not achieved either in swap or well as your test and set. So, to get the third requirement of bounded weighting, we go for lock and unlock. So, when you go for unlock and lock here, let me make it very clear here. We have the variables, we have a, showed, a shared variable which is nothing but lock, the initial value of it will be false. And you have two other variables, one we call is as waiting, you have your waiting array and you have your key variable. This lock is a shared variable which is to be used by all the process. Whereas, your waiting and key nothing but your local variables that are related to each of your process. And initial value of this will be false. Assume if I have 5 process. So, each of the process will have its own waiting queue. So, assume this is P1, P2, P3, P4 or P5. So, P1 is related to waiting of 1. So, waiting of 1 is nothing but for the first process, waiting of 2 is second process, waiting of 3, waiting of 4. For each process, it has its own designated waiting value and key value is also local. Now, this algorithm basically we wanted to use for implementing bounded, bounded waiting. Now, coming to here, waiting of I. Now, for example, I want my P1 process to enter into critical section. So, what do I do? Initial values of all them are false. So, P1 I want to enter, so I will make it as true. Waiting of 1 is equal to true key is equal to true. So, P1 ka key value you will make it as true. Now, coming here while waiting of i and key. So, what is waiting of i of P1? It is true. So, here I will get true and key value is also true. While true and true, you are going for your test and set. Test and set, what is that you are passing? Address of your lock. So, what is your address of your lock? Assume 1000. So, that address will be present in your target and you all, all know it will be just changing the value. So, this value will be changed to true, but you get the false value as your return value. So, coming to here, my key value that is will be returned is nothing but false. Now, when I again enter into the while loop for the second time, waiting of i, it is true and key, what is my key value now updated to false? So, what is my second condition? True and false. So, when you have true and false here, it means that the total condition is false, now it enters into critical section. So, P1 is in critical section. 
But what is that we wanted here? We wanted to check bounded weighting. So P1 wants to check whether there is any other process which is waiting for that particular thing. So here when you go for checking this J is equal to I plus 1. Now you are at 1. So your I value is equal to 1. Then you will make J is equal to 1 plus 1. What are the number of process you have 5? So here is nothing but 2 percentile file which is nothing but 2. So my J value is 2. So J is equal to 2. Now what is that you are checking here? This total while loop is nothing but J is not equal to I. So I is equal to 1, J is equal to 2. The first condition is true. And weighting of J. What is weighting of J here? Weighting of J you want not weighting of J. So if you go for 2, what is weighting of J here? False. Not of false here is nothing but true. So while true and true you are just incrementing the value of j so j value will go to the next value which is nothing but 3 percentile 5 you are checking whether 3 wants to enter into critical section it will continue this total thing is in a while loop so you go on continuing so it is 4 percentile 5 is equal to 4 5 percentile 5 is equal to 4 next afterwards after 5 percentile 5 you go for 6 percentile 5 which is equal to 1 and you repeat this till you get this one value where your j and i value will be equal to j value. So here when j is not equal to i when I am at 6 this is 1 not equal to 1 it is false it totally comes out of it and now 1 is equal to 1 you will just make your log is equal to false meaning that there is no process which is waiting. Assume you have a process which is waiting so in that case what you do is if some of these particular process assume this is was true what you would have done you would have made that particular value to false indicating that chance will be given to that particular process. Listen carefully here what will happen is when you are, when process 1 is in the critical section 2, 3, 4, 5 will be checked till you again get back. So it will be in a circular fashion. So here we are meeting all the three requirements. We will go for the remaining methods in the next class.